time. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners. We are marching into the playoffs, baby. Hopefully, if you're watching this show, that means that your team is still in the playoff race. And with the playoffs coming up very soon, we need to not only reinforce our team, but we've got some buys and we've got some injuries that we need to take care of as well. So you're going to be looking to utilize the wa waiver wire this week. Now, who's going to be top priority? Who should you be spending your fab money on? I'm going to be breaking it all down for you right now. So hit that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you are new here. But ladies and gentlemen, first up, normally I do my fan tracks find of the week. There isn't anybody that... I believe is kind of under the radar on this show or somebody that you really haven't heard of. So instead of my find of the week, I'm going to do my fan tracks first up of the week. And that is going to be Rashad White running back from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, if you've been watching this show, I've told you for probably two or three weeks now that I had concerns over Leonard Fournette and that Rashad White was starting to see a little bit more and a little bit more work. And that if you own Leonard Fournette, you need to have Rashad White. Well, if you didn't already get him, it might be too late now because he will more than likely be the top waiver priority heading into week 11. Now, there is a little bit of risk with this because Tampa Bay is going into a buy. So you're going to be using a waiver priority on a guy that you can't even use in week 11. And on top of that, when you talk about it, what if, uh, you know, what if Leonard Fournette is, is fine in a couple of weeks and he's the starter again? As of this recording, I don't know the extent of his injury. I don't know how banged up he is. I don't know how much time he's going to miss, if any. So there is a little bit of a risk to this. But again, if you if you own Leonard Fournette, it's a no-brainer. We're adding Rashad White. If you have a team that's dealing with bad running backs, you don't have a whole lot of running back depth, you might not get many chances the rest of the season to grab a guy that you could potentially start as a flex. Rashad White is my top priority ad this week. He looked excellent after Leonard Fournette went down. We're going to put him at the top of the list. Isaiah Pacheco from Kansas City is another solid addition right now. You know, a couple weeks ago was named the starter for Kansas City. Hasn't really put up starter numbers, right? They're still kind of rotating everybody through. But CEH... He only played four snaps this past week, and I don't know why. I've literally been trying to, to look for everything I can find. Why did CEH only play four snaps? Just looks like he's number three on the depth chart now. Isaiah Pacheco finally had a starter-like game, 82 yards on 16 carries. And you know what? I think he's going to continue to see that, especially if something is wrong with CEH. Maybe he's banged up or limited for some reason, and we don't know it yet. We'll definitely see that kind of workload from him going forward. Elijah Mitchell owners and truthers rejoice because it's crazy to think about. But even with Christian McCaffrey on this team, Elijah Mitchell led the 49ers in rushing this past week. 89 yards on 18 carries on his return from the IR. CMC only had 38 yards on 14 carries. Now, CMC is going to be the lead back. But there is a clear 50-50 split on the ground here between these two. And also, CMC... He's still viable because he'll be the main pass catching back. But to me, it looks like they're going to do everything they can to keep CMC healthy for the playoff run and the playoffs. And then that is where you will see him utilized in the same way he was used in Carolina. So Elijah Mitchell, he could end up being a flex opportunity play for us moving forward forward for those of you that held on to him that could be a little bit of a boost to your lineup if you've been having issues with depth Jalen Warren from Pittsburgh going up against Cincinnati this week I'm thinking if you're a Najee owner you're investing in Jalen Warren again we continue to bring up his name as well Najee did have to leave the field briefly this past week but at this time of the year it is wise to own our backups because then again if an injury happens you've already got a guy and you're not fighting on the waiver wire to try and get somebody that you should already have and then Kyron Williams, I'm going to bring his name up again. His return to the action this week, you know, not a whole lot. He did catch three passes. But if Cooper Cup ends up missing significant time, which, again, as of this recording, we don't know the exact issue, but it didn't look good. So if he misses significant time, you know, they're going to need more playmakers. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do need to run the football a little bit. Kyron Williams is really just a few big plays away from starting to take more and more and more away from Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson. He's not a start yet. He is definitely a stash, though. 
I have a ton of options at the wide receiver position this week, and I'm going to try to go through them a little bit quickly so this video doesn't turn out to be like 35 minutes. But let's go ahead and start rolling and let it flow through some of these guys. Julio Jones, again, Tampa Bay going into the bye, so probably not a priority for you, but the Tampa Bay offense is looking a little bit better. Julio Jones is the wide receiver three, and he could be a wide receiver three option the rest of the season if Tampa Bay continues to play well. Kadarius Toney, uh, we've got Michael Hardman missing time. We had Juju Smith-Schuster get rocked, unfortunately. He had to leave in the concussion protocol. How long is it going to be until those guys get back? Kadarius Toney stepping in, five targets, four receptions, 57 receiving yards, and one touchdown, still 50% or under 50% owned across multiple platforms. We are now grabbing him, and more than likely, depending on the update of the other two guys, starting him against the Chargers next week. So we'll also mention Marquez Valdez-Scantling, and for some reason, the other guys do miss time. He scored a touchdown last week, or he had 60 receiving yards last week along with that touchdown. He might be a guy for deeper leagues or for those of you struggling to find somebody with buys and injuries. Donovan Peoples-Jones, Cleveland, going up against Buffalo. This is a tough matchup. I don't love it in Week 11. But for those of you out there and he's still on your waiver wire, grab him and put him on your team. 80-plus receiving yards again this week. Another nine targets leading the team. When Deshaun Watson comes back, we could, we could see this team start to push the ball down the field a little bit more as well. Darius Slayton from the New York Giants. Detroit has looked a lot better recently against wide receivers. <clears throat> Those of you out there that yelled at me for not starting Darnell Mooney last week. Slayton is the wide receiver one right now for the New York Giants. Four targets, three receptions, 95 receiving yards, and a beautiful touchdown. At least 50 yards in four of his last five games. Nico Collins for Houston going up against Washington. Collins finally made it back. He's looking healthy, led the team in targets, scored a touchdown. Not a bad matchup to go with it this week either. Nick Westbrook, Ikine. I'm not picking him up. The only reason I'm adding him here is just because if I didn't, y'all would be like, what about Nick Westbrook and Kine? So I wanted to throw him in here real quick. I'm not picking him up, though. Not with Traylon Burks being back. Not with Robert Woods being there still. And not with a team that has been so poor passing the football. Even It doesn't matter if it was Malik Wilson, Ryan Tannehill's back. They still haven't been great at all this season. I am not going to sit here and hold my breath that he's going to put up performances like we saw in Week 10. Kendall Hinton. Now, we don't know how serious the Jerry Judy ankle injury is, so we'll, we will continue to monitor that. But Hinton was the guy that kind of led the, the, the B team, right, that came in after Judy went down with five targets. But they were spreading it around a little bit. For But for, again, deeper leagues, deep benches, Kendall Hinton might be first up in terms of priority from those wide receivers there in Denver. Uh, Paris Campbell for Indianapolis. Matt Ryan ended up starting. So Frank Wright wasn't allowed to start Matt Ryan, but Jeff Saturday was. I think Jim Ursay, uh I think Jim Ursay had it out for Frank Wright. I think that was on purpose. But because Matt Ryan was back, it meant Paris Campbell was back. Another nine targets, 76 receiving yards on seven reception on seven receptions, and a touchdown. He could be a sneaky option next week against Philadelphia when they're really buckling down on the outside wide receivers like Michael Pittman, Paris Campbell on the inside. Making some moves. I like it. I potentially like it this week. Christian Watson, huge week this week. Holy Watson. But again, Lazard's banged up. We're missing uh, Romeo Dobbs. And just the offense as a whole has been bad this season. So Christian Watson breaking out for three touchdowns was not on my bingo sheet last week. But going up against Tennessee this week, if he's owned or if he's not owned in your league, he might be number one for you guys. He might be the number one guy that you want to grab. Van Jefferson, there's no news on Cooper Cup yet. We are continuing to monitor that situation. If he misses time, Van Jefferson is going to get a significant bump for me, especially when Stafford comes back. Demarcus Robinson with Bateman being done for the year. Demarcus Robinson probably going to be the wide receiver too. In Baltimore, they're coming out of the bye. So he's the, guy's, he's the guy to monitor that might be pretty cheap for you this week. And DeAndre Carter for the Los Angeles Charger, Chargers. Another good game. Scored a touchdown this past week. Again, if no Allen and no Williams, DeAndre Carter going up against KC is probably going to be a start for me. Cole Komet is number one up on my tight end list. I mean, this is a guy that we loved at the beginning of the season. I don't know what Chicago is doing to start the year, but they are they were not game planning the way that they are now. 
kudos for kudos to Chicago for as bad as their play calling was at the beginning of the year. They have gotten a lot better in terms of utilizing the strengths of their team. Cole Komet, multiple touchdowns in back-to-back games. Touchdowns in three straight games. He led the team with seven targets. He is the tight end pickup right now. If you need a tight end, it is Cole Komet. Harrison Bryant scored a touchdown this week. David Njoku, he got back to practice, but if he doesn't end up playing this week, Harrison Bryant is an emergency option for all of you. Juwan Johnson, he just scores his fourth touchdown in the last five games. And for those of you that continue to want to start Taysom Hill at tight end, stop it. Juwan Johnson is a better option right now for you. And Foster Moreau from Las Vegas with Waller going to the IR. This is a guy that, again, emergency options. If you're looking for something at quarterback, or excuse me, at tight end, Foster Moreau is a guy that you could grab and maybe start in a pinch. All right, let's talk about some streaming options now. Quarterback and defensive special teams. At the quarterback position, three guys I'm keeping an eye on this week. Davis Mills going up against Washington. I know Chase Young isn't going to be back this week. He might be another game-time decision next week on whether or not they can activate him. So Mills might not win you your week by any means, but he is a guy that could be just good enough that he won't lose it either. Washington has the third fewest interceptions in the league this season. Probably won't make too many mistakes against them. Jameis Winston, it looks like Andy Dalton, his time as starter could be over, which I think is for the best because he hasn't been good. Let's get Jameis Winston back out there against the LA Rams. Let's make Chris Olave fantasy viable again. Let's throw the puck around a little bit. That's going to be Jameis Winston. And then for Daniel Jones going up against Detroit, the Lions this year have struggled with running quarterbacks. Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields absolutely blew them up on the ground. They had trouble containing those guys. Daniel Jones has a little athleticism in himself as well. He can extend some plays, run with his legs, maybe score a touchdown on the ground as well. For defensive special teams, the Giants going up against Detroit is a team that I want to mention. Detroit has looked a lot better, but golf can be very inconsistent. And when that happens, he, he forces the ball a little bit. He got a little bit lucky against Chicago a couple of times. The New York Giants have been great against the pass this year. The Raiders going up against Denver. Even with the bye week, Denver didn't look great this past year, and they could be made without, uh, be without one of their main weapons in Jerry Judy. And then for the Saints going up, going up against the L.A. Rams, we don't know about Stafford and Cooper Cup as of yet. Those are going to be two things to monitor because if those guys are missing, I'll take the Saints defense at home against the Rams. All right, let's close out the show with a few players that you could potentially drop, but definitely probably should be sitting for the time being. David Montgomery for Chicago is number one. Somebody in the comments this past week was like, how could you How could you keep pushing Khalil Herbert over David Montgomery? Because it's clear Khalil Herbert is the better running back right now. He's being utilized as such. Herbert had 10 carries. David Montgomery only had nine. Herbert averaged 5.7 yards per carry. David Montgomery averaged 4.1. Khalil Herbert looks like the better running back, but not even that. Justin Fields is the top rushing option right now. He's taking away a lot of those opportunities that David Montgomery used to have. We cannot start David Montgomery right now. Clyde Edwards-Alaire for Kansas City. I mentioned it earlier in the show. He only saw four snaps this past week. If he truly has been regulated to RB3 duties in Kansas City, he's not going to be fantasy viable going forward. Keenan Allen. I'm done with Keenan Allen for right now. He's my boy. His jersey's behind me. Absolutely love him. But those hamstring injuries with how he has re-injured it and how long it has lingered, there might be a chance that Keenan Allen is not seen for multiple weeks again. And he's highly, highly, highly predictable in terms of potentially re-injuring that hamstring as well. I'm staying away from him for the rest of the season. If you own him, I am trying to trade him in a deal where you work it around basically saying he's a throw-in that could help you later in the season. And then Taysom Hill. I want you all to stop it with Taysom Hill, okay? Because it's embarrassing at this point that I have to keep having this conversation with you. Let me read you a few notes that I have here in my notebook. He has one passing touchdown this year. It happened in week five. He has one receiving touchdown this year. It happened in week seven. He has five rushing touchdowns, so I'll give you that. Three of them came in one game, and he hasn't had any since week five. In fact, since week five, he has 4.5 fantasy points, 9.6, 7.8, 1.1, and 0.1. That is good. 
in half PPR leagues for 23.1 points. For those of you out there that say, oh, well, he has the same, he has the same floor as any other tight end that you would start. He's the tight end 25 since week five. Get out of here. Drop Taysom Hill. Stop starting him. I don't care if he blows up this next week. He only has three fantasy viable performances all season long. And he's only finished as a top 10 tight end three times. He has not a tight end option. Stop playing him. Stop it. Play Juwan Johnson instead. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. Sorry I had to scold some of you out there, you Taysom Hill truthers. Stop doing that. But I'm going to get out of here. Appreciate everybody checking out this video. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to help you out. Talk about some guys that you may be needing to drop, who you might be wanting to pick up. I'll try to help as many of you as possible this week. Hit the like button for me, though, and subscribe if you're new here to the Fantasy Headliners. Getting ready to push over, maybe by the time this video drops, 175,000 subscribers here on the channel. Appreciate y'all. Y'all are amazing. Peace out. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I'll catch y'all on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. <laughs>